Good morning, dear students. Uh, welcome to your Google Classroom. Uh, now, today also, we will continue with the discussion on plot, character, setting, and so on. And in the last class, uh, we were discussing uh, the importance of plot in fiction. Uh, how important is the plot? Uh, and uh, um, I have quoted uh, Aristotle uh, and uh, his theory uh, in order to support the viewpoint that plot is all the more important. Uh, and uh, here we will be discussing uh, the different uh, sections like uh, uh, characterization, setting, uh, narrative techniques and so on. Uh, we will be discussing uh, these terms, not very elaborately, uh, but um, I will explain to you uh, what these terms mean. And when we go through uh, the textbooks that we have to study, or uh, when we go through the long fiction and the short fiction that is recommended for you to study this semester, uh, there we will see these terms again, uh, or an illustration of these terms. And so for the time being, I will explain to you uh, what is the meaning and the significance of these things. Uh, and so, uh, in Aristotle's poetics, uh, he uses the term mythos for plot. Uh, and uh, according to Aristotle, even characterization is subordinate to plot. Characterization comes second. Or according to the great philosopher Aristotle, uh, plot is all the more important. Uh, even more important than characterization. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, according to Aristotle, uh, plot is the soul of tragedy. Uh, and uh, for every plot, there should be a beginning, middle and end. Uh, and, and so, according to Aristotle, um, your plot is more important than even characters or characterization. And he says that a well-knit plot has a beginning, middle and an end. And uh, if any part is taken out, uh, uh, we feel that something is missing. Uh, and so much important, um, uh, Im uh, important are these three parts. Uh, and so a good plot should have a beginning, middle and end. And if any part is taken out, the story suffers. Or the reader will feel that something is missing. Uh, and then, uh, and, uh, uh, plot and character, it is interfused uh, in some stories, in some fiction. Uh, and th now we will see uh, who is a hero or an anti-hero, a protagonist, antagonist, a foil character. Uh, these terms comes in relation to characterization and plot. And so I will just explain what these terms mean. Uh, and so in a plot, uh, I told you that plot is of primary importance. And, uh, on, and as the second one comes characterization. Uh, and uh, the chief character in a plot uh, is the protagonist or hero. And so the main character uh, in a plot is called a hero or a protagonist. Uh, in modern fiction and drama, the protagonist sometimes exhibits 
the opposite of the characteristics of a typical hero and such a character is called anti-hero. Uh, and so uh, in a plot the main character is called hero uh, uh, and uh, he is also called the protagonist. Uh, and uh, sometimes in modern fiction and drama you will see a hero with negative qualities. Uh, usually a hero is one uh, who is very genuine, uh, very handsome, uh, upright uh, and so on. Uh, and a hero is an embodiment of good qualities. That is the traditional concept of a hero. Uh, and so according to uh, uh, see or uh, uh, according to the traditional concept uh, a hero is an embodiment of noble qualities uh, but in some fiction especially in modern fiction and drama uh, you will see uh, the hero the main character who is hero the main character the chief character uh, he will be showing many negative qualities in that case, he is called an anti-hero. Uh, and see, uh, and so you understood the term hero. See, first of all, uh, you have to understand what these terms mean. Uh, plot, then characterization, then the important uh, uh, character in the plot called hero. And when will the hero become an anti-hero? I hope you have understood. And I will give you an example. Uh, if you go to uh, Shakespeare's uh, Macbeth, uh, you know, you are all, see, I have taken Macbeth as an example because most of you are familiar with the play Macbeth. And Macbeth, the titular hero of the play, uh, he is actually, he was a great warrior. Uh, uh, he was a great warrior. He was the commander-in-chief of the uh, king's army. Very brave. Uh, but uh, he had uh, some defects in his character. And the main defect was his vaulting ambition. What is called vaulting ambition? over ambitious nature. A uh, one who is over ambitious are one who feels that end justifies the means. Or if you feel that uh, by hook or by crook, you can achieve your goal. Ah, uh, see, that is over ambitious nature. Or uh, that is the problem with over ambitious nature. And so Macbeth had many good qualities. But at the same time, he, he had a very negative character, a great defect in his personality. Uh, that is his vaulting ambition. Uh, and uh, Macbeth does many crimes. Even the killing of Duncan, uh, his friend Banco, uh, even the killing of Lady Macduff. Uh, see, all these are because of his vaulting ambition. See, I have taken Macbeth as an example so that uh, you are already familiar with the story. And so Macbeth, because of his over ambitious nature, that becomes his tragic flow. Uh, or uh, what do you mean by the tragic flow? Uh, the great mistake because of which uh, because of which uh, the tragedy happens. And so, uh, uh, and uh, as such uh, a character cannot be called a hero but an anti-hero. And so thus uh, the titular hero Macbeth becomes an anti-hero. Clear? And so you understood who is a hero. Uh, the uh, concept that the hero is an embodiment of all noble qualities. Then how does the hero become the anti-hero? Uh, when he has, when he exhibits negative character, uh, he becomes an anti-hero. And an example is Macbeth. And then 
uh, and see hero another name for hero protagonist and then the next term is antagonist you should not be confused with these terms a who is an antagonist the most prominent character who opposes the protagonist is called an antagonist uh, an antagonist and so who is an antagonist ah the main character in a plot in a story who opposes the anti hero or the protagonist is called the antagonist and uh, antagonist is usually see if there is a hero antagonist will be the villain if there is an anti hero uh, then antagonist uh, will uh, will not be um uh, a villain he will be a virtuous character um see again uh, we will take the same example of macbeth in macbeth uh, macduff becomes uh, the antagonist uh, he is a virtuous character uh, but he kills macbeth at the end uh, and so uh, if the protagonist is evil if the hero is evil then the antagonist will be a virtuous character or uh, if the hero uh, is a real hero an embodiment of noble qualities then the antagonist will be the villain